Victoria C. Magda arrives, the other conference close behind her. She takes over stroking the boy's head. His breath is thin. She touches the dash above his nose. This is deep, we need offset. She looks to Solden, then back to the boy. You're safe here. <coughs> there now. Solden nods, but can't take her eyes off her mother's hands. How gentle they've become. All step hurries towards them. She's with a crowd of others, women, children, old folks, all curious to see what's been pulled out of the sea. Solvay says, will he die? Magda has her hand at his neck. She shakes her head, nay. Asta sits and stretches her legs in front of her and motions for the boy's head to be put on her lap. She feels along the length of the gash. Solvay, you'll need to help me make the stitches. Asta pulls a pouch from her tunic. Solvay shakes her head, no. Yes, you must see my fingers. They're, these are too bent. We want the boy to remain beautiful, don't we? She raises her moist eyes and glints at Sylvie. Gun pushes Sylvie forward and kisses. Sylvie needs to, kneels down beside Osta, and the boy moans. Johan's body shivers. Is shivering the only thing that makes him think he must be alive, not dead? His mother is smiling. Where did she go? His body twists struggles to follow his mother under the sails, but it's pinned to this stone. Don't open your eyes. Don't let them see you. The giant arms that pulled you from the water, where did they come from? Don't make sound. The body is breathing. Breathing. Why is it breathing? Asta points to Birgit. Gather the herbs, comfrey, and plantain. She pulls a silver needle and a length of thin twine from her pouch. She holds them up to Sylvie. Start at the forehead. Three stitches, she says. Eight. Sylvie threads the needle, then straddles the boy and sits lightly on his chest. She de decides to begin just above his eyebrows. She pulls the swollen flaps of skin together and pierces one side. The boy bucks like a goat when she loosens her hold on the needle. Hold his head, she cries out. The boy's blue eyes are rimmed with red fire. Sylvie stares down at him and whispers, Don't take pity. Lars places his giant hand side of the boy's head. Osta and Magda hold his arms. Bianca and Inger hold his legs. The boy fights, but can no longer move. Quickly, says Osta. Sylvie imagines that she's mending her boot and pushes the needle through one side of the gash to the other. A deep cry howls from the boy's belly. She pulls the twine through and ties the ends together. The skin closes. She makes one knot, then another, and she bites off the longer strand. She concentrates on her work. Johan keeps his eyes closed. Don't let them see you. The girl, her braids like rope, pushing down on her head. She's trying to pull it up, mother, up to these demons, hackling as they burn my flesh. Where are you? You're chaining now. Why did I hold on? Now we'll pay. He kicks and twists, but nothing can move. He sinks deeper, the only way out. Sylvie backs, Sylvie leans back and examines her stitches. A few shreds of skin have been ripped too thin to pull together. She's doing what she can. It's much easier than she'd imagined. And she almost forgets everyone is watching, that her mother and Osta are inches from her, that Lars's fish breath surrounds her. The other men have returned from the sea. No sign of the ship or others, she hears them tell. Now they watch her from around the circle. Sylvie sees her father, and he smiles back. Her knees press into the boy's shoulders she feels her way along the room. One small stitch beside the nose. She's careful to avoid the bone. Then she moves along to mend the flap of skin that should be his cheek. Asta leans in, her bent finger pointing and prodding, but Sylvie doesn't need to be guided. She knows how to 